Islamic Republic of Iran executes protesters, including via public hanging. On December 8th, the Islamic Republic of Iran carried out the first execution related to the Masa Amini uprising by hanging the protester, 23-year-old Mohsen Shekhari. He was hanged after Iran's revolutionary court staged a cr trial and found him guilty of muharabe or enmity or waging war against God. He was executed less than three months after being accused of being a rioter. On the same day, several UN-appointed in independent human rights experts condemned the regime. The United Nations accused the regime of conducting unfair trials and committing, quote, arbitrary deprivation of life. Only a few days later, on December 12th, another protester, Masha Reza Rathnavard, was executed. This time, he was publicly hanged above the streets of Kurdistan province. Just like Shekhari, Rahnavard went through a sham trial and televised forced confessions that visibly displayed the injuries inflicted via torture. Both victims were denied the right to choose a lawyer by the Revolutionary Court. Mahmoud Amiri uh, Moga, uh, Mogadam, director of Iran Human Rights, a Norway-based group, has urged Western leaders to take action. He warned, if Mohsen Shekhari's execution is not met with serious consequences for the government, we will face mass execution of protesters. So if anyone joined the stream last week, you would have seen that we found out about the execution of Masha Reza. Um, during, no, his name was yeah. Majid Reza. Um, Majid. During the live stream. And so, yeah, now more information is out. And I wanted to make sure to cover it more fully. Yeah, so the part that you said that they don't have uh, the lawyer of the choice, okay? the government like they can't choose their own lawyer but it's worse than that if you actually look at the court videos their lawyers are actually actively helping the judge when it comes to accuse the you know the the defendant like they are in cooperation like everybody is against the defendant like the, the two uh vic so far victims that have been executed by the government the lawyer is not like, even trying to defend them they're just there to accept what the judge is saying right their only defense like i was watching the videos and the defense that uh, one of the lawyers had to the judge is like oh he's so sorry he he is guilty he did do these things and but he he was honest about the fact that he did these things so maybe please show some leniency but like the lawyer was confirming first of all the the second guy who got executed the all the evidence is about his so-called crimes it's not been shown in full you know what i mean like we're seeing so little of the videos and they have access to all of the videos so why are you not showing the rest? Why are you not? Why is the lawyer not asking for the rest? The lawyer is even even asking for the rest. The lawyer is not even asking for witnesses for 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 the defendant. They're not talking about there's like there's so many alternative narratives about what happened. Like so, the first person that they executed, the guy didn't even kill anybody, and they still executed him, right? Um, let alone the fact that the the Muharabe accusation doesn't even fit based on even based on Islamic standards. Even like I, I don't want to, I don't want to like argue from an Islamic side because it's all ridiculous. But even if they were applying Islamic laws, muharabe is when you intentionally take a weapon towards a crowd, not the government, to, towards the people, not the government, with the intention of causing fear. Right? This guy's intention wasn't didn't seem to be causing fear he seemed to be going after regime forces specifically especially even in the in the own the videos that he released when he did this he threw the knife away and he ran away so he wasn't targeting the people so he was targeting targeting the regime forces so based on its own um 
criteria for what is muharabe this is it didn't even fit war against god based on based on the government's laws right so if, even a whole bunch of religious people religious scholars in iran have been yelling foul right look how bad the regime has to be where the but the second guy who did actually apparently well again I, we don't know anything but kill two people the the place he did it was right at the door of his house okay like if you were a lawyer for an actual lawyer for this person you were like this guy obviously didn't have the intention to come and kill somebody something was brought to the doorsteps of his house right he saw something there was things that led to that like you don't plan you don't plan such an attack on the doorsteps of your house like something came to his house he didn't go to something something came to his house which made him come down without a mask without putting on a mask to do something you know he's probably defending something against a, a you know an attack a threat a, a threat right um and we have seen other videos about what these regime forces do when they show up at the at the door at the door of your house they'll they smash your invasion. windows in destroy all your property completely destroy turn over the, all your furniture or your property smash things break things the harassment of the people in the street and this guy shoot right? your windows out yeah this guy was even based on the videos that they released seemed like he was defending his family and or his people in, in that neighborhood against this attack all right this is why a lot of people are considering him a hero a video by the way a video came out of him um uh, like by the government they tried to hide this but eventually leaked that yeah. he said they were trying to embarrass him they were trying to in the in the forced confession confessions of that was released they asked him like you said for my death don't don't read the quran huh like they wanted to be like look how evil this guy is he he his request in his will is that when i die don't play the quran don't read the, don't recite the quran and he's like you said that didn't you and he was like yeah i did i said uh celebrate my life basically like have a party instead of you know reading the quran and, and he said that uh, yeah uh, uh, instead of crying and reading the quran um celebrate you know no but i want to like so, paint a, a picture of this video for people because we can't show it right you can't yeah, find this all over confession. social media but we cannot show this because this is a forced confession yeah so in this video you see majid reza and he is standing there blindfolded and on either side of him there are two thugs executioners covered in black face masks and in the video before it zooms on in on his face you can see that his arm has been broken and it's covered in bandages and in a sling against his body and then it zooms in to his face as he's blindfolded and can't properly face the camera and they try to interrogate him and embarrass him and use this against him and I've had so many, I've seen so many people share that video with the commentary of like, this video will be the end of them. Like, do they think that this is supposed to demonize him in our eyes? Yeah. Like this turns us against you that much more. Yeah. It, like it was... we, we curse your religion. We curse your customs this is how what you do it for this is what you do in the name of it there you know so many people are like publishing this video will be one of their greatest mistakes yeah yeah people turned him into like that that line of him that says don't play the quran for me like they they thought the regime thought that this was such a gut you this was such a gut you but instead it turned him into a hero like look at this brave man while arrested confirming that don't play the quran also the forced confession i don't know what they did to him 
because he was saying like please i execute me as fast as, as fast as possible like i a lot of people are suspecting that you know his family was being threatened and he just wanted to get you know the regime to just do it so that his family is safe right because he was like begging for it like just do it just like execute me right um and again i want to remind everybody one more time that the way that the government executes you in iran is even worse than islamic standards because they hang you slowly like they don't have a trap door that you drop and your neck breaks right away they put the rope around your neck and they lift you so that you slowly suffocate and it's one of the worst well, actually i think it's the worst execution method in the world right now so yeah they somehow managed to be even more sadistic than than islam which is quite a thing yeah and, then and by the way for anybody for, for anybody who wants to say like the the man is a hero in iran for defending for actually doing like a lot of people are like oh he killed two people and people in iran are saying well, again i don't want to say anything on youtube right but that i'm specifically saying um, anything about that but he has been turned into a hero for taking a stance against the regime forces right in the neighborhood like iranian people like the, the any any sort of violence that you see um being committed um by the iranian people these are violence that has been forced upon the iranian people by the government okay anything you see is likely self-defense but well, go on oh yeah that picture crap i just took it away i'm sorry also i'm not dealing with pakistani defense forces bs today i'm just not dealing with he, him today i'm not dealing with this um that's good. yeah he doesn't deserve he's actually no. i think we should block him permanently because he's such an idiot okay um and he's spreading nonsense yeah it's really harmful so um um this is a picture of majid reza um while he was in detention and when he was in detention he was allowed to see his mother and they were reunited really briefly and there are these super sweet video um photos that came out of them together and you just see like the emotion and look on her face and she's just so happy to see her son and she looks really hopeful and um it kills me because now she is going to have to live the rest of her life seeing the image like i saw the videos of his body hanging from a crane above the sidewalks of their province And she has to live with seeing these videos of what they did to her son before they killed him. And not only that, these monstrous besieges, they went to their house and spray painted all over their house the house of a murderer and they were taking selfies in front of their house that they just vandalized they interrupted every attempt that they had every attempt the family had to have a memorial for Majid Reza um it's just so cruel. Like this. <laughs> this mother, this family, like no one deserves this. 
Um, and I don't know. I really don't know what else to say because it's just so barbaric in every conceivable sense. Um, but Armin, I was wondering if I could, you know what I, um, sent you the, the day after he was executed, that piece of writing I did? Yeah. Do you want to read that? Because that would, I don't know if that is TOS. I have a heavily redacted version <laughs> that mm. would comply can with I, TOS. Before you do that, can I just mention two, two things, right? This picture was taken is is um a day if i if i'm correct about i think yes this is a picture um a day before the execution okay and at this time the, they didn't tell the mother neither of them knew that this was their last moment together they weren't told like they were actually giving signs that there are things that might be hopeful right they didn't so even is... tell him that they had been executed they just told them where he had been buried yes so they executed him without telling the family that their that your son is about to be executed the mother found out the son has been executed after he's already been buried and they had a private gathering of besieges to come watch the execution okay as a way to um give motivation to besieges that we're doing something so if you see the picture, I don't even know if I want to show it. Do you actually, I don't know if you have the picture. Uh, there's a line of besieges just like white watching like early in the morning with the morning azan calls to prayer. They execute the people right at the at the sound of the azan in the morning, the Islamic <laughs> call to just prayer. It just makes right? me want to vomit. Yeah. And they have a whole line of besieges just watching the ex execution just because this is what the besieges wanted this is what their pro-regime people wanted so they had a private showing they didn't tell the people to come watch the public execution because obviously if they told it publicly um the people that would have showed up would be anti-regime and they would be protesting the execution so the public execution was uh, exclusively available for seeing for besieges and pro-regime staff and forces as a way to satisfy their thirst for blood for the for these people um, also, there's another picture. Um, there's another tweet I want to show. Oh my god! Yeah. So this is <sighs> Kian Kian Pirifalek's father. Remember the the kid that we told you that the regime forces. Um, yeah, let me just block Pakistani Defense Force because we don't need his propaganda here anymore. Um, we don't. Um, we uh that the kid who was shot by regime forces in the in the streets right so this is his father and he was in coma the entire time right remember his son was sh shot dead by regime forces so he is recovering and he is saying when while he's recovering okay he's saying if i was injured and I can't move. Um, if, I, if, if my movement has become problematic, I st I'm still thankful. I thank God that my son is okay. Okay? I don't know what I would do if Kian was shot. Okay? So he still doesn't know that his son is dead. He still doesn't know that his son was shot dead by regime forces and dead because he was in coma. And nobody still has the heart to tell him. So he said he was shot in the same scene. He was shot as well. And he was in the hospital this entire time. And he said, it's OK that I'm shot and I'm injured. And I'm like, uh, it, it, like and that I can't move because I'm still thankful that my son is OK because I have no idea what I would do if my son was, was shot. So not only his son was shot, his son is dead. But. He doesn't know that yet so nobody nobody has been able to tell him that so oh my god
I don't know. I still cry over this stuff like every other day. It, um, this amount of, um, agony is, um, it's, it's intolerable. Get the note that you wanted to read. Okay. Um, so, um, when we were on the stream last week and we found out that, um, the second protester, Majid Reza Rahmavard, was executed, um, I was, um, really in shock and I, like, couldn't process it. And then the next morning I woke up and I was, um, filled with, oh, don't, don't, don't scroll to the bottom because you see the forced confession. Um, I was just filled with rage and so I had a piece of writing and I cannot share a lot of it because it breaks TOS heavily. <laughs> um, but I um, cut down a version that we, we can share. And um, I don't know, I think this is just like my feelings on the situation and when stuff that's this terrible is happening, like, what more is there to say, you know? Um, and so, um, this is part of what I was, um, feeling. I said, may I never stop crying until you're on is free. <laughs> May my heart never become desensitized to this suffering. This abject barbarism. May my rage never die. May I never forget the beauty of the people lifting their voices for liberty. What Azadi sounds like ringing out throughout the air. With each cruelty, I feel a part of myself shatter, yet my resolve hardens. My mentality crystallizes. My heart has blackened. Expel every fucking outpost, every spy center. These people don't deserve our morality and our standards. It's only for the sake of a future enlightened Iranian nation that these monsters will be spared every bit of cruelty that they accumulated. Iran deserves to her history of being a beacon of light to the rest of humanity. I'll go back to feeling okay, but I don't want to feel better. This deserves 1,000 years of tears and more. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of other feelings I had that I, um, can't include, but. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. I don't know. I think, um, I know I cry over this, like, every week, um, but. We should keep crying, but we should also get active and take action and spread the word. And I, I, I can't help but not feel so strongly about it when I see the agony of the closest and dearest people in my life. You know? <laughs> when they say, I had to flee my homeland with nothing more than what I could carry. They've already taken everything from me. So I'm gonna fight until the end. I just deeply feel like I have to 
help. I have to contribute. I have um, a lot of people that I talk to, and I just am moved very deeply. Um, there was someone I chat with in Iran, and I can't give the details, obviously, but um, lately he sent me his picture and his name, and he said, I just want someone to know who I am if anything happens. And um, it's, um, I don't, what do you say, you know? And it's beautiful to see this movement, which is one of the most, like, life-giving movements I've ever seen in my lifetime. But um, it's complicated when you know that um, people are going to die. I don't know. I'm sorry if that was... Too much of an emotional outburst no no there's a lot of support for you in the live chat um oh my god okay oh crap usually i bring tissues but i forgot to <laughs> oh my god could you give me a few seconds to go get some tissues <laughs> Okay, okay. Is there any other news that happened this week that you want to cover? Um, a lot. I don't know. I mean, I don't have it all prepared here, but there's a lot that happened. But um, I'll just I'll just read some of the live chats while you're gone. Let me actually okay. see. If, Oops. Can you? Okay. I just want to see this Maxwell's comment. It's just so irrelevant to what we're talking about in the live chat what does this got to maxwell can you can you keep on topic what the hell has that got to do with anything um it's it's the can we try not to blame everything on the u.s all the time i know the united states is responsible for a lot of things in the world that are both good and bad but can you please not act like people in the Middle East don't have enough agency to be responsible for some of the problems that exist there themselves? Like the a lot of the problems that we're dealing with in, in Iran right now, okay? It's because of the Islamic Republic. It's because of the regime, okay? Again, I don't want to com completely whitewash the role of um, you know, United States and what it has done in history, okay? Um, but that is not helpful at all right now. The immediate pro problem right now that the Iranian people are facing, in United States right now is part of the solution to that. It, it can be part of the solution to that. It's not part of the problem. So constantly blaming everything in the United States is not at all in line with what we need right now. Uh, every, all the attention and all... Uh, the fight needs to be focused on the Islamic Republic of Iran at the moment, not w when it comes to trying to figure out a way to improve the lives of Iranian right now. No other enemy deserves any attention, at least with this fight. Um, oh, thank you, Tim. Tim is saying, well said, Armin. Good to have a balanced view. I feel like we go over the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that a lot of the people, um, like many Americans, again, not all, like to have America to be the center of everything, whether it's good or bad. Like it's kind of the, it's kind of both sides of the same coin. Like a lot of Americans think like America is uh, responsible for all the good that is happening in the world, okay, which is, responsible for a lot of good but not all the good right 
But on the other side of it, there's a lot of people in the in in, in our life chat that constantly think the United States is responsible for all the bad in the world. Uh, both of both of you are just America centric. You just cannot tolerate United States not being part of the discussion, right? So I understand a lot of things revolves around the U.S., but please understand that there's a rest of the planet as well that needs its own unique perspective and attention independent from the United States. Um, I okay. have a, something I want to ask of our audience. So, you know, we talk about these executions and it, we feel like we're powerless, but here's the thing. We're not powerless. Now, one of the things that's most important that we can do is we can be the voice of the people in Iran. This is what the community has been screaming at the top of their lungs, asking for support to do. And this is how we can act. So there are still roughly at least um, 28 Iranians sentenced to death over nationwide protests as of um, a re report I found on December 10th. And so what we can do is use the hashtag, hashtag do not execute, hashtag stop executions in Iran, whether this is on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, da, da, da. Use these hashtags to go find the names of some of these people that are facing execution and use their names as hashtags. Get these names trending. There are a lot of different people that need to have their, their face in front of the media because the regime does respond to this pressure during the um as a result of the 2019 bloody Abon protests there were a number of protesters who were facing the death penalty and because people got together and started trending their names and trending do not at hashtag do not execute hashtag stop executions in iran the death sentences of these protesters were commuted this does work this has worked before, and it is our responsibility to have this work again. So that's one of the main things I'm asking of our audience. This is how we can help, because a lot of people are like, I don't think I can do anything. The other thing that you can do is contact your elected representative. Now, I don't care what country you live in. Most countries, you have an elective representative. And what many European countries have started to do, particularly Germany and Austria, Germany the most, they have had elective representatives adopt a prisoner who is facing the death penalty as a political sponsor. So what this means is that this politician has adopted this protester as their case. They're going to represent them represent their cause outside of Iran, represent them in, the, in their interests in approaching the government and saying, I want to make sure that this person remains safe. I want to make sure that you look out for this person's status. How are they? Are they safe? Are they healthy? We need to keep an eye on them. So this is very important for politicians to do. So I would love to see like American politicians taking up some of these, um, uh, political adoptions, so to speak, political sponsorships, I mean. And um, the main thing that I want to do, and this will be for Americans, um, one second, uh, let me find it. Okay, here we go. Okay. And let me pull it up. Okay. And in fact, I'm going to pull this down. Okay. Americans, if you are watching this, I would like you to scan this QR code that I created, okay? You see this? Americans, now is the time to support the MASA Act. Okay, now, um, wait, let me, how do I bring it back? Okay, here we go. Um, what is the MASA Act? So, let me share my other thing. If you scan that QR code that I created, it will bring you to, um, da, 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 da. okay, here we go. It will bring you to this Google Doc that I created. What is this Google Doc? This Google Doc is everything you need to know to contact your representative about the MASA Act. So, first, very quickly, 
Right now, there is a bill that has been introduced to the floor of the House of Representatives. And um, let me find the full name. It is the Masa Amini Human Rights and Security Accountability Act, or Masa Act for short. And this is a bill that is levying sanctions against Khamenei, Raisi, his cabinet, all of these people in very targeted ways. And you can go read through the whole bill if you want, because I included it in this Google Doc. Okay. So all you have to do is find your representative if you don't already know. I include a link in all the instructions you need to find your representative. Now, ideally, you would also find their local office number. If you don't, that's fine. Number two, after you have your representative, you find the phone number of their DC office. Okay. I made it super easy. There's a Google Doc right here that has the contact information for every US representative in the US, okay? No matter what state you're in. Next, you can use this email that is pre written for you as a script, or you can just use it to send as an email. Call your representative, send them an email. They have the mandate to record this and respond to you, respond to your needs. You're their constituent. And so once again, wait, let me bring back the keyword. So you have all the information, super easy for you to find. Okay. Once again, let's share this. Boom. Scan this QR code and you will have all the information you need to tell your representative to help pass the MASA Act through the House of Representatives. Then it would go to the Senate. Da, da, da. then it would pass Congress. So right now, the big thing is that it is almost entirely Republicans who have so far signed their support for the MASA Act. I believe last time I heard there was only a single Democrat, oh, single Democrat that supported the MASA Act. This is reprehensible. And I'm not gonna start talking about NIAC because I will start ranting. Which okay. Democrat? I don't remember off the top of my head. The Iranian community that I have been networking with has personally asked, they could not be more clear that this is the type of action that they want the government to take. They want these sanctions. This goes against popular narratives that makes Democrats very uncomfortable. So <laughs> the, the Iranian community could not be more clear to me and expressing their wishes of pushing for the MASA Act. Yes, that includes sanctions. They want to combat regime affiliated propaganda that has been lobbying on the regime's behalf for decades. This is coming from the community and this is what they are seeking. So please, 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 like I said, all the information is present if you scan this QR code. Email your representative, call your representative at their DC office, at their local office. If you're, if you're on fire, do it once a day, tell them how you feel. Maybe just go on a rant about how they're not doing enough or what these protests inspiring you, how it affects your life personally, and then tell them that you want them to support the MASA act, which is, um, let me find the exam, uh, HR 9203. HR 9203. You want them to show their support for HR 9203. Okay. So Americans, this is what you can do. People are asking for what you can do, especially if there are not demonstrations in your area. This is easy and it's tangible. And this is what the Iranian community, American, Iranian American community has been asking for. So now's your opportunity. Please go ahead and take advantage of this. I tried to make it as easy as possible. Um, Miriam is saying, how do I scan this if I'm streaming this from my phone? Okay. Try to take a screenshot and then you should be able to open it from the screenshot or maybe scan it from a separate device. Um, after, you know, the stream is done or pause, whatever, whatever. If you pause and stop to go do this, I will forgive you. <laughs> In fact, I encourage you, but, um, just yes, screenshot can, it. Yeah. Screenshot it. You can um, send this to other people. I tried to make this as easy as possible for anyone to do. And, um, you know, credit is where credit is due. A lot of this um, 
information that it, I found in this document I got from the Iranian Americans that I've been working directly with. So I need to give them credit as well. Um, that being said, please go ahead. This is really effective um, activism, Susie. Amazing oh, work. Thank you. I was like on it today. This is what I whipped up. <laughs> you're doing, you're such a great activist. Like this is like, this is the real stuff. This is the real deal. Good job. I'm oh, so thank proud you. of you. I try, you know, like I, I was at a demonstration yesterday. This is what they were talking about. And I was like, I have this platform. Like, let me do this. Um, it's not that hard. I want to get the word out to as many people as possible. Yeah. Oh, Marion, thank you. Um, uh, oh, Killa's saying that's actually a great doc. Well, thank you. I tried my best. Um, wait, this is uh, a bit different, but I, you know, we deal with so much horrible stuff. I want to try to give moments of joy, like when I can. So can I show something that made me smile, like Iran related today? Yes. Okay. Um, let me pull it up. Here we go. So some of you guys will remember <laughs> last week we showed a um, uh, a video of uh, American two Americans. One was a black guy and one was a white guy. And they were saying things in Persian in support of the Iranian people. And some of them were just like nice things like we need to stand up and be the voice of Iran. And then the other things that they were saying were um, cussing out Khamenei. <laughs> in Persian. And so this video popped up on my screen today. Wait, I need to um, double check to make sure that the audio is sharing. I'm sorry, one second. Okay, here we go. And um, guess who's back? Guess who is back? Okay, let's watch this. Oh, wait, shit. Hey, what's up, buddy? Yo, he's the man. Oh, what? it's back, he's back. So if you're listening, what comes on screen is um, Samra Javi, who's a friend of Atheist Republic and also a very major anti-regime activist. And he's like saying in the beginning and then he's like, look who's here. What's up, buddy? And then the white guy from the other video comes in and starts what? chanting death to Hamane, like in Persian. Yeah, yeah, let's play it because it got cut. The idea got cut, played. His accent is pretty good. Yeah. Okay, he has, he's saying it pretty good. He's speaking pretty good. Very well. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. He That's knows good. all the chants. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he knows all the chants. Like some says half of it, and he knows the other half in Persian. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it, the 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 Iranian protesters sh uh, show a lot of appreciation for any non-Iranian that sh shows any level of sympathy or bring, uses their voice to bring attention to what's happening in Iran. Like there's, you can see a lot of appreciation from the protesters whenever that happens. So, and that's why this guy's yeah. becoming famous. <laughs> yeah. So this guy, apparently his name is Kevin Robinson. You can find him on Instagram at, um, at sound underscore for journalism and it turns out his background is that he's i saw a video he put out and he talks about how he this is like the sweetest thing i've ever heard he's married to an iranian woman and he said like i love my wife so much like her heart will never heal until iran is free so i'm doing everything i can to free my people and um he goes hard <laughs> wow. like i i've become obsessed with him and it was uh funny because i see a little bit of my myself in him because i was at this demonstration yesterday and there was someone on the mic talking about um 
the bill, the MASA Act, HR uh, 9203. And she was talking about how only one Democrat has shown support. And I started to get so worked up. I'm in the middle of the crowd and I just go, be shut up. (laughs) And everyone looks at me like, what the hell? And then I'm like, okay, that was maybe inappropriate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got I got too worked up. Um, you you had a star comment that you wanted to bring up by Higgs boson. Oh, um, yeah. So this was a question by Higgs boson, and I think this is just a good clarification for people. So he's asking, um, to clarify, are they executing? Oh, I should pull up. Are they executing actively, or are they put in death row to be executed later? I think Iran tops executions in the world after China. So in in terms of the number one and number two, you are correct. So yes, they are executing actively. Are they being put on death row to be executed later? Yes, that as well. There are a number. It's very hard to keep track of the numbers because, I mean, it's increasing constantly. But there are a great number, I think, at least two dozen, if not more, people who have already been sentenced to death. And then there are many people who have been charged with crimes, quote unquote, that carry the death penalty as the punishment. They just haven't faced that sentence yet. So it's still very, very two risky people. Two people have been executed so far, right? But there are a lot more people on death row. And the things that you need to know is that the executions are happening way too fast. Yes. Even by Islamic Republic standards, usually it takes one or two years. Now it's taking like after the arrest, 70 days after the arrest, right? So there is no time even if they had a lawyer that was actually doing its job right now, the lawyers that they're picking is government pick and they're not actually defending the defendants. They're not asking for defense from the defendant side. So you're not seeing, you're only seeing the government's narrative, the government's, the videos that come out, they get cut exactly when you need to see the before and after, like they have access to all of the video and you're not seeing the full picture. And nobody is demanding to see the rest of the videos. Nobody is asking to see, asking for an alternative narrative other than what the regime is providing to us, right? Um, and they're just being, you know, and even the appeal process, like because in Iran, when you get uh, put on, uh, when you get a death sentence handed to you, then you should be able to appeal it. But the whole appeal process also takes at least a year. But this from the beginning to end for for the, all the court the arrest the court procedure, uh, procedure and the proceedings and then the death sentence and the appeal and then the rejection of appeal all of that is happening in 70 days which is unbelievable like even even people who are on the re- regime side are saying like okay this is this can't be right like we're taking lives i think we, maybe we should be a little bit more careful some people from the regime side are saying maybe like this is too much but other people from the regime side are saying like we actually have need to execute faster right um anyways like one thing that these executions are doing is that it's making more pro regime people um you know lose their faith in the government as well like we saw like some of these executions even the executions that some people thought that should happen right they thought that the the manner in which they happened was so illegal based on the regime's own standards that they were like, okay, this regime is just thirsty for blood, right? So so some people, it, it is affecting some more people to uh, move away from the regime, which is what we want to see. Exactly. The cracks in the hardliners, what this depends on. Ah, D brings up a very good point. All of that is happening, and the media are also getting arrested, so it's hard to get the full picture. Not only are media getting arrested, journalists are getting arrested left and right. I think there are over 40 journalists who have been arrested. Um, Now people's lawyers are getting arrested. Yes. So the lawyers for the journalists, the lawyers for the protesters. It's a common thing, actually, by the way. Like, you as a lawyer in Iran could get arrested for being too effective at defending (laughs) the defendant. Like if you're doing such a good job, <laughs> you might be like, "That's a hey, wait a second, that's a crime," <laughs> you know, you know. So um, again, the, the lawyers that the government picks, they're called tasheri. Like 
um, lawyers, like they are, you know that their entire job is to make it easier for the judge to carry out the sentencing. Like they're, they're collaborators. They're yes. Like, yeah. I, there's some information that I have that I can't even share right now because of the people who might implicate. So, but I'm just, yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a lot we can't discuss, yeah. unfortunately. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Doctors too. Higgs boson is saying, yeah, there was one doctor who was killed, who was killed. A, a female doctor in Iran was killed for tending to the protesters wounds. But that was not an execution. That was just yeah, like tortured and then killed. Tortured and killed. Her like, body was found. Yeah, her face was smashed in. Okay, and they say like um, she died in a car accident. There's so many all, all these families of these protesters. Come, by the way, this is why you should not believe. Like when the regime comes and gives you a narrative, this is why you shouldn't believe it because the entire family as of the doctor and everybody they're like. No, that's not what happened. She, this is how she died. And they came and threatened us. And they told us to give the regime narrative, right? And they're like, this person died in a car accident. This person ju jumped, you know, fell off the rooftop. This person had a heart attack. This person uh, had a, a, you know, brain seizure. Like, what are you talking about? Like, so everybody, know, like, it's just so ridiculous. Constantly, like, they haven't accepted any of the kills. Any of the people that they've killed in the street, they haven't like one. Maybe, yeah, maybe like maybe they, if you're like so lying far, to I have counted one. It was oh, the one. guy that they killed for celebrating when Iran lost to the U.S. in the World Cup. They arrested oh. some dudes who were supposedly responsible for killing. Oh wow! Him so okay, on manslaughter finally, so, charges, if I'm correct. So from the 400 people, more than 400 people that they almost have killed, 500. Almost 500 people they've killed. So far, they are like, okay, maybe we killed one person. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. I believe his name was um, Mohsen, and he was from Rasht. Yeah. yeah. That's the only one I've heard of so far, any semblance of responsibility. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we should go to the next news. Can we uh, clap for the? I think I think maybe they did that because it was becoming too ridiculous. Because they needed a narrative to be like, we hold some, we hold our people responsible because they need some scapegoat to be like, oh look, we're actually being fair. Um, oh my God, the bar is so low. The bar is in hell. Oh my yeah. God. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.